just how sturdy we can get it. Uh, so with that, I'll just walk you through guy walk you guys through uh, the plugin real quick. So here we have our core. So this is where you can find that last piece that you need that's going to export the code, right? The simulation slider and the different type of instructions that you can send to the robot. So here we see spline, point to point, linear. There's also circular and axis. I haven't used axis or circular. And out of these, I've mainly stuck to point to point or spline. You can also, if you learn KRL language, which is uh, based on the very outdated Pascal coding language, you can straight up code to the robot through Grasshopper. Uh, here's our selection of robots. And once you activate the full license with our FIU license, you also get your different turntables and your different uh, setups on rails that you can set the robots to. Uh, here's the different tools that you can use. So there's a couple of preset ones, such as the spindle. I think the spindle that we have is this one. Uh, and we also have different type of grippers. I think this is the vacuum gripper that we have as well. Uh, but then you can also set up your own custom tool, right? Like we did in this case for the extruder. And then there's toolpath utilities, right? So this is anything that's going to take the toolpaths from the core section, and you can add more instructions to that. So this is where you find the safe plane, for example, or you can reorient planes. Uh, you could even, instead of making everything points, you can use a divide curve or a divide surface, right? That's a little bit trickier because, but also kind of easier. It just depends how you're going to work. But say you have a curve that you want it to follow, Right? So if the curve is like this, you need to set a guide point or curve. So if the guide point is here and the curve is like this, the robot's tool is going to orient between the curve that it's drawing and the guide point. Right? So if it's drawing that curve, does that make sense? It's always kind of tracing, pointing to that guide. Right? So that's how divide curve and divide surface works. Um, again, case by case basis, what's going to work best? But then you can orient, for example, like always be straight up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, in that case, you would just use point to point or spline because um, by using a divide curve, you're tracing that curve and you would copy that curve above it as its guide. But at that point, you might as well just use point to point on that curve because it's going to defaultly create a plane right along that curve that's already x y and z like according to the robot right. does that make sense we can this is something that you know you'll you'll see more and more and it'll start to make more and more sense as we work with it right so in utilities there's a bunch of other things you can make the robot wait for another operation so if you have two robots working together this robot does something it waits for the other robot to finish doing whatever it's doing before it moves again uh, analog and digital out. So basically, if you have the vacuum gripper or the spindle, you know, yes, uh, suck for the vacuum, or yes, spin for the spindle, or no, don't spin, or don't, you know. So, but George is working on figuring how to wire the tools directly to the robot so that we can send those type of instructions. Uh, I haven't used anything else in here, so I'm not sure. And then this is uh, the MXA plugin within the KUKA plugin, that is Grasshopper plugin. <laughs> so this is to live control the robots. So we can hook up the computer directly to the robot and uh, manipulate the robot live through Grasshopper, which we also need to figure out or maybe in the future when we've really mastered simulations and running those simulations properly. Uh, but basically, that's a full rundown of the KUKA plugin. And you see that I really only used, in order to achieve this extrusion, I really only used the spline command, adding a safe plane, and that's really it, All right? Connecting to the core there. Uh, okay. Any questions? <laughs> questions or no? They'll, they'll pop up as we work on this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's a multiple amount of like errors you can get. So if I just draw this curve for it to do, uh, 
um, right? Like we see that it's going to this point, right? But the angle that it's having to get there to that point is pretty impossible, right? And this is what I was saying. If you use a spline or a point to point, the axes, right? You can see the orientation of that point is default matching the orientation on the robot, right? That's why if the robot's going to keep its orientation, right? If the flange isn't going to be turning or tilting, then you can just use the default orientations. But sometimes if you're getting an error as far as like mobility for the robot, right? We might have to move the curve further away or higher up, right? But in that case, I can kind of tell like this axis should be up here, right? It shouldn't be down there. So you can try reinterpreting whatever you're inputting. So I can flip this curve, right? So that did something, but it didn't really fix the issue because I can kind of tell that uh, if I were to move to the end, right, I'd be getting the same error. So this is initial posture, right? And here I can see where those errors are happening, right? So I go advanced, initial posture, change that. Okay, so that's more like what it's supposed to look like. I go to analysis, and I don't see any errors anymore, right? So I can hit apply, and we can run through the whole simulation, and we can see that it's tracing that curve now. I don't know why it's doing... Oh, I added a safe plane. So what you're seeing over here is the safe plane. So what it's doing is... It's drawing on that line and then it's going back to the offset. Drawing a line and going back to the offset. So uh, just to, for it to just trace that line, I would just eliminate uh, the safe plane. Right? Does that answer the question? Yeah. So it's the way you draw it. The way you draw it, right? And then also how the robot's interpreting that thing. Yeah. It's a lot of trial and error, but through that you start to figure out what works, what doesn't, you know, and uh, I'm not sure if it's 